If you're looking for the latest news, insight into what it means, and the sharpest opinion, there's only one station in Chicago where you can turn, and it's this one. We're AM560, The Answer. Good morning, Dan, and in for Amy this morning, Chicago Tribune editorial board member Kristen McQuarrie. And uh, Kristen, I don't know if you got a chance to watch Google CEO Sundar Pichai uh, before members of the House this week. But I'll tell you what, Jack Dorsey, Zuckerberg, Sheryl Sandberg, now Pichai. I mean, it is eerily reminiscent to me watching them deny anti-conservative bias. Eerily reminiscent of big tobacco CEOs before Congress all raising their hands, uh, swearing to tell the truth and nothing but the truth uh, in, in uh, offering their testimony and denying that nicotine was addictive. Hmm. Despite, you know, generations of uh, scientific research they had at their disposal, we know that indicated something else. I mean, it really is. Um, and let me just give you an example. Here's Pitch Eye at the Google Postmortem Cry Fest in 2016, this video that came to light back in the fall, this past fall only. Breitbart had it among, I think it, maybe it was Breitbart who got it originally. But here's a pitch I uh, following Larry and Sergey and preceding every other C suite executive at Google to decry Trump's victory and, uh, you know, commiserate with the Googleists about it. We have, uh, you know, we undertook a very thorough investigation and in 2016, uh, we, we now know that uh, there were uh, two main ad accounts. Uh, link- That's not it. This is it. Here's Sundar. There is a lot of serious note, you know, myself. There is a lot of fear within Google. You know, I've gotten a lot of emails, uh, you know, to my note back. Uh, you know, and, you know, I would tell most Googlers there are people who are very afraid. Uh, and, you know, Sergey pointed out the, uh, you know, uh, you know, many groups, you know, women, blacks, you know, people who are afraid based on religion, people who are afraid because they are not sure of their status, uh, the LGBTQ community, and I can go on. There, there is a lot of fear. And so I think, I think it's important to reach out, be aware of that fear. Uh, I would be sensitive and try and talk and have conversations uh, to the extent possible. We are so deeply committed to our values. Uh, you know, Sergey mentioned, uh, mentioned at the start, nothing will change. I think we'll stand up always for the values we uh, believe in. And especially, I think, in a society, you stand up for people uh, who are minorities. And that's what defines a society. And we'll continue to do that. What about standing up for minorities within Google, like conservative James Damore? Don't stand up for them. So listen, so you heard what he said there in 2016 after the election. Stand up for minorities. Uh, what he wants to promote, consistent with the culture there. So this was sort of crystallized by the exchange he had with Congressman Jim Jordan from Ohio. And the issue that was the focus was this this Google employee named Eliana Murillo, who emailed about turning out the Latino vote in key states, Nevada, and Florida. Rides to the polls, the way ostensibly uh, Google was returning searches, at least that's a question. So think about what Pitch I said back in 2016, and then listen to this exchange with Jim Jordan and see if you think that this is credible. Here's um, uh, Jim Jordan sort of laying out the case. Look, I don't have a problem with Google being civically active. But I do have a problem with the particular phrase. This is where the problem arises. Look, look, I actually think that's all okay, right? I think that that's just a good corporate citizen encouraging voter participation, encouraging people to participate in our election process. I think so far those sentences are just fine. But then there's three words at the end of each sentence that do cause me real concern. And those three words are we push to get out the Latino vote with our features in key states. Now suddenly it gets political. We supported partners like Voto Latino to pay for rides to the polls in key states. Now, that makes everything different. So I got really just one question for you. Why? 
Why, why, why did Google configure its features and pay for rides to the polls to get out the Latino vote only in key states? Congressman, as I said earlier, we found no evidence to substantiate those claims. The only effort we do around elections. So your head of multicultural marketing, who you praised her work in this email, gave her a shout out, was lying when she said you were trying to get out the Latino vote in key states? We today, in the U.S., around elections, we make it, and this is what users look to us for, where to register to vote, where to find your nearest polling place, or what are the hours they are open, and we do, the, we what do those asking. things that, effectively. That, that, that. As Google, we don't have goals around pushing out to get any particular segment. Uh, we don't participate in partisan activities. We engage with both campaigns. We s uh, support and sponsor debates so, across both sides of the aisle, and we provide users with information to get to election. Uh, I'm sorry, but I find that uh, difficult to believe, particularly because of Mr. Pichai's own words about fo focus on minority communities. Uh, in addition to uh, the entire video you should watch, it's more than an hour long, their 2016 post-election conference, and all that you heard from Sergey Brin and Larry Page and Sundar Pichai and the rest of the Google execs. And I also find it hard to believe because I've seen the creepy line about Google and Facebook, this documentary that you should see. And we're pleased to be joined by Matt Taylor, who is the director of said documentary, for a reaction to what... Uh, Mr. Pitch, I testified to on the Hill. Matt, thanks for joining us again. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me. Pleasure so what, what about that? Uh, Sundar says there's no partisan activities. Uh, they just provide uh, polling place information and other generic information about uh, participation and voting. They have no perspective on particular turnout. They have no perspective on elections in particular states. They just want more civic participation. And what's wrong with that? Well, I mean, from a basically the nuts and bolts of it, what's wrong with it, is if they are targeting key states, they have ceased to be just civic corporate helpers, and they have actually entered into the world of uh, what is all under uh, the FEC. I mean, look, if, if you're taking people to a poll, if you're targeting people, you're taking them to the polling place that has a monetary value in our election system, you have to file that. You know, any data firm, advertising from anyone who works for an election for a super PAC has to file, it has to be public. Uh, and that would be, those would be like in kind donations to whichever candidate they were, in fact, helping, which I think we all know who they were helping. Uh, so that, that's, you know, kind of a fundamental issue that they're basically giving free services away. Uh, and this kind of comes down to like one of the issues with Google when they play in elections um, is that they are doing things that are giving one candidate or one would cause a monetary value uh, that would otherwise, like any other vendor, uh, have to be uh, public. I mean, it's, public, it's a public election. So that's a big issue right there. Can you talk about, um, just aside from the, the tangible driving people to the polls type um, examples that came up in this testimony, but... What, what, is, what is the more sinister or, or more concerning aspect of this in terms of search? You know, like, w break this down for me. When I go on Google, is there a concern that I'm being steered to certain content to influence my voting behavior, and is that also something that you think should be reported? Well, here's the deal. Ultimately, what people have to understand, is the word bias is thrown around in the testimony all the time. Is Google biased? No, Google's not biased. Google's not biased. Google's not biased. Google's not biased. By definition, the search engine must be biased. Because if I search for, we use this example in the film, what is the best dog food? It has to do two things that are absolutely critical. Number one, it has to choose 10 pages out of billions. And number, number two, and then kind of more importantly, we have to put them in order. Something always has to go to the top. So when you're asking it, what's the best dog food or where I should go to, you know, for vacation, I mean, it's debatable whether you're even getting the best results there or you're getting the results that Google wants you to get. Uh, but if you ask it, what's the best candidate, or how should I think about this cause, well, that all of a sudden becomes entirely critical. Because the thing is, is one candidate will always go to the top. Because ultimately, what Google has created in the search mm -hmm. engine is a, giant, is a giant kind of information sifting system that kind of maps our perception. So it's always going to choose one thing over another. And, 
and ultimately that's where the engineers have encoded their ethics to choose something to make something better over something else or good over bad or, or whatever. So if Mr. Chai wants to say, hey, look, we're going to police hate speech, but we're not biased, uh, those two statements don't line up. Right, I think when I, it comes to yeah the the mm-hmm. issue the issue is the criteria they use right are they using criteria to wire those search results in such a way as to minimize uh, profiles on Republican or conservative candidates uh, to the benefit of profiles or information about Democrat candidates for example or uh, in this case with this uh, memo this email that uh, came to light are they wiring the uh, the algorithms such that uh, they're dr- trying to drive Latino turnout in Nevada and Florida for the benefit of Democrat candidates there. That seems to be the question. The criteria they use and is there evidence of rigging the searches in that way? I mean, even if you were to give Google the benefit of the doubt, say they're not actively doing it, there is no way to get around the fact that the people who build the machine have preferences. They just do. You know, because remember, it still has to make a decision. You know, now you do add things that, you look, know, you don't have to take my word for it. You can just watch the videos and read the leaked memos and all the other things that have been coming out of Google for the last couple of months. You know, they can sit there and say, oh, there's none, there's none, there's none. Um, it doesn't show in, in these things that we keep seeing. In addition, we don't ask these questions about how people leave in other companies. I don't, I don't say who, how many Democrats work at Microsoft or an Apple, or a Honda, it, it's just Google and Facebook, because they control the information we see. They built the censorship machine and the surveillance platforms. You know, And so I think, ultimately, this is where it does matter who's building, who's choosing. You're right, the criteria on which we see things, uh, this, this is pretty much the, the, the question of the day. You know, How much information, where are we going to be steered? These systems are designed to surveil and to manipulate us. Um, and that people need to start coming to this understanding that that's what they are doing. And that's what they're pushing into these different directions. And, hey, look, just watch the videos, read the memos. That's their perspective. What What is your perspective on the company CEO's reaction? Both Google, Facebook stock has tanked, or I'm not sure if it's climbing back up, but do you think that they are nervous about this perception that they are anti-conservative? And are they doing things to rebuild that trust relationship, in your opinion? I think Google and Facebook have very different positions in the market. I think Facebook is incredibly vulnerable because I don't have to use Facebook. You know, that's, that's a product that I don't have to use. Uh, that's a, that's a, a, a company that has been sh- uh, shown to use incredibly aggressive estoppel-like tactics by hiring firms to be around the people. Um, Google, on the other hand, has 90% of search. I don't have a choice. So Google doesn't have to take aggressive tactics that Facebook does. Um, there is no alternative right now for, for a number of Google products. There are, there are you know, you, you don't need to use Facebook. I don't need to use anything they do. I don't even need to touch them. I can't visit a website without encountering a Google, Google Analytics, Google AdWare, I, anything, or AdWords, I mean, I can't, it's hard to, to do, we have to use Google search to even make this movie. Um, and so I think Google is probably less concerned uh, than Facebook because there just is no alternative. They have a huge lobbying presence in Washington. Uh, they, parts of, the whole entire uh, uh, Apple mail system, Google servers, New York Times mail system, New York uh, Google servers, parts of our government use Google. Um, so they're fairly integrated and they're probably in a much safer position to say, you know, Facebook. Oh, and it also, Facebook seems to be getting hit from all sides in a way that Google was not. I mean, it's not just the having some former execs, uh, you know, having their James Damore like uh, uh, Palmer Lucky, the Oculus VR founder, sort of break bad after his separation from Facebook about uh, the culture within Facebook, much like Damore talked about the culture within Google. But it seems now that Zuckerberg and Sheryl Sandberg are taking a lot of heat from the left as well. So they're getting squeezed in a way that Google is not. Well, absolutely. I mean, you know, I like to joke, you can see who, who Google donated to in that, in that hearing yesterday. Um, you know, <laughs> if, if these companies donate to candidates and, you know, there, there's an integration. But again, you know, Facebook is cool. Facebook is, it gets useful. Uh, but Google's a flat-out 
utility. I mean, you, you have to use these systems to conduct your business. If your business is not on page one of Google search, you just don't exist. Uh, Facebook doesn't have that kind of control. Um, you know, and again, I think that Google is a smarter company. They're a longer thinking company. They make better products. Um, and their, their, their leadership and their engineering teams and everything are just overall better. They're more controlled. Um, you know, you, you saw Sundar Pichai, he, he, he was killer in the, in the, um, in the hero who was sympathetic. Um, he, he, you know, I, I think in a lot of ways, um, some of the motives of some of the, the higher ups in Google are also um, less, uh, they're more utopian versus kind of Zuckerberg, which I find to be more of a, of a cruel and, and kind of mean motive. Um, what, what you see the kinds of things they've been doing. Re- refresh our, our listeners' uh, recollection about the uh, genesis of the name for your documentary, The Creepy Line. What's The Creepy Line? Well, in 2010, former Google CEO Eric Schmidt was doing an interview, I believe, with The Atlantic. Um, and he said that Google policies to go right into the creepy line but not cross it. Um, and we found it to be a very peculiar choice of words. Uh, creepy is bad. I mean, there's no way for creepy to not be bad. As Jordan Peterson says in the film, a creepy mugger is worse than a mugger, you know. Um, so, uh, we, you know, and that's 2010, eight years ago or almost nine years ago. And so you have uh, Google says, hey, we want to go up to this unethical, immoral area, but we're not going to cross it. We think they cross it every day, all day, um, and people don't know, and that's why we made this film. He is Matt Taylor, director of the documentary The Creepy Line on bias at Google and Facebook. You can get it on streaming services, at least for now. Matt Taylor, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. And he joined us on the turnkey.proanswerline. 